Myeloma is a multifocal neoplasm of plasma cells, hence the term multiple myeloma. Another more modern term is plasma cell myeloma. The myeloma deposits arise in the bone marrow in sites such as the skull, ribs, long bones and vertebrae. The malignant plasma cells produce an abnormal immunoglobulin called a paraprotein. This is an aspirate of atypical plasma cells from a patient with multiple myeloma. The plasma cells can be recognised by their eccentric nuclei containing a cartwheel pattern of chromatin. Multiple myeloma is the second most common haematological malignancy with an incidence of around 5 per 100,000 per year and 2% of all cancer deaths are from multiple myeloma. It is a disease of older people with a median age of 70. In fact, only 2% of cases affect people under the age of 40. Myeloma affects men more frequently than women, and it is also twice as common in the Afro-Caribbean population. Most myelomas produce IgG, around 70% of them, and a smaller proportion of them produce IgA or IgM. Around two-thirds of myelomas produce lambda light chains and one-third produce kappa. The light chains can pass through the kidneys into the urine where they are detected as Benz-Jones protein. Occasionally, however, the myeloma cells do not produce light chains or paraproteins and these cases are known as non-secretors and approximately 2% of patients with myeloma are non-secretors. The morbidity and mortality caused by multiple myeloma is due to the systemic effects the disease causes. Osteoclast stimulating factor is produced causing the bones to become weak and susceptible to fracture. Infiltration of bone marrow by the neoplastic cells reduces the number of functioning bone marrow cells present and there is a decrease in production of normal immunoglobulins and the plasma proteins may cause hyperviscosity. Another important complication of multiple myeloma is the production of AL type amyloid from the light chains. This is a skull x-ray from a patient with multiple myeloma. Here you can see the typical lytic bone lesions throughout the skull producing what is termed a pepper pot skull. The most frequent presenting symptom of myeloma is anemia. Other symptoms it may present with include bone disease causing bone pain or pathological fractures, hypercalcemia, raised ESR, renal impairment and complications of hyperviscosity such as nosebleeds and headache or it may present with non-specific symptoms such as lethargy. This is a bone from a patient with multiple myeloma and the myeloma deposits are the dark punched out areas. Having seen what the systemic effects of myeloma are and how myeloma may present, the complications of multiple myeloma are pretty self-evident. To recap, these include impaired immunity, bone marrow failure, the complications of hyperviscosity such as nosebleeds and blurred vision, pathological fractures, amyloid and renal failure. And because renal failure occurs in approximately 50% of patients with myeloma, we shall go into a little bit more detail about how this may occur. It is the Benz-Jones proteins that cause the major renal complications in multiple myeloma. 
the proteins damage the renal tubules. And this is what is referred to as cast nephropathy. Other complications include pyelonephritis, amyloid and metastatic calcification resulting in renal damage. This is an example of cast nephropathy. The casts are the amorphous pink areas occluding the tubules. It is these that damage the tubule epithelium. Multiple myeloma is diagnosed using a technique called serum electrophoresis where an electric current is passed through serum that has been impregnated into a gel. This causes the proteins to separate into different bands and an abnormal paraprotein band is produced in the gamma globulin region in myeloma. This is an example of serum electrophoresis. To orientate you, the thick bands at the bottom of each column is albumin, and at the top of each column there is a much broader, rather fainter band, and this is the gamma globulin region. The abnormal paraprotein in myeloma can be seen as a thin, dark band in the gamma globulin region. An abnormal paraprotein in the gamma globulin band, however, does not necessarily mean that a patient has myeloma. To make a diagnosis of multiple myeloma, a number of different criteria have to be met, and this depends on whether patients are symptomatic or asymptomatic. The criteria include abnormal serum paraproteins or Benz-Jones proteins in the urine above specific threshold levels, the presence of neoplastic plasma cells on biopsy and bone marrow aspirates or biopsies showing increased numbers of plasma cells again above specific threshold proportions. Other criteria include radiologically detected skeletal lesions and immunoparesis. The average life expectancy for patients with multiple myeloma is around five years, although the prognosis is improving and the life expectancy increasing with new treatments such as bone marrow transplant. Anemia and renal failure are poor prognostic factors, but the prognosis tends to be better in young patients. And of course, those who can tolerate the more aggressive types of therapy. Sometimes there may be a solitary tumour composed of malignant plasma cells, and this is called a plasmacytoma. Plasmacytomas occur in the bone or soft tissue, and they may produce a paraprotein. And 60% of cases of plasmacytoma go on to develop multiple myeloma. Another condition that can cause confusion is when a paraprotein is present but in levels lower than in myeloma where there are no skeletal abnormalities and this is called monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance or MGUS. 1% of people with MGUS per year progress to develop myeloma. This is a serum electrophoresis gel from some research I did many years ago and it created a bit of an ethical dilemma because of an abnormal paraprotein band that occurred in one of the sera tested. The patient ended up being investigated for myeloma, but there were no criteria present to make that diagnosis. So this is a good example of monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance or MGUS.